Hello and welcome to day 14 of 30 GIMP tutorials. So you took some photos of a friend or maybe a selfie and then you realized after the fact that the wrong color outfit was worn. So should you redo the photos? Nope. After finishing this tutorial, you'll know the secret to changing the color of clothing. It's going to be awesome. So let's do it. The secret to changing the color of clothing in GIMP is making a precise selection. We have nine different ways or nine different tools to make selections in GIMP. So which one should we use? Well, we're not going to go over all nine selection tools in this tutorial. I have other video tutorials that explain the other selection tools. So I want to talk about one type of selection tool that I see being used in a lot of other tutorials, and that is the pass tool. So if you're not familiar with the pass tool, it's right here and you can select it with the letter B as well. What you do is you click once on the area where you want to start your selection and you're left with this node or anchor point. Then you come down to another point where it kind of bends right here and then you can click and drag your mouse down to bend that line to match the curve of the outfit. Then you would continue down the outfit by clicking and dragging again. And as you can see, it's not aligning perfectly, but no selection tool is perfect. So basically, this is what you would have to do. You'd have to come in here and keep clicking and pulling, clicking and pulling. And if it's not giving you what you want, then you have to come in, hold down your control key, click and add another anchor point just like I did there. So I'm going to do it again here. Control key is held down. I'm going to click and then I'm going to drag that anchor point or node inside to fill in that gap that was there. So that's what you have to do. And it takes a very long time to get that completed with the pass tool. There's a quicker and better selection tool that will get this done much faster. And that is the scissors tool, which you can find in the free select tool group right here. If you're using the most recent version of GIMP, then all your tools are grouped by category. If not, you should be able to find it, which is this icon right here. You can also use the keyboard shortcut, which is the letter I. I love the selection tool. Now, the way it works is very similar to the past tool, except it's going to magically find the edge of the outfit and automatically add the path. First, you need to give it a starting point by clicking one time along the edge, which is similar to the pass tool. But check this out. When I come over here and click again, boom, it automatically finds the edge by looking at the contrast levels on the left and right side of that path. And then it says, okay, there is a huge contrast difference right here. Let's apply the path along that line. And then you can continue clicking along the edge of the outfit and it will automatically apply that path as you can see. How cool is that? I love this selection tool. Okay, I'm going to come over here. Now, just like the pass tool, it's not perfect. You may still need to go in and make adjustments because it may have trouble finding the edge of the contrast because as you can see right here, it, the contrast level is probably very similar to the background, so it's not able to really find it. So we still need to go in and tweak it, but it's still 10 times faster than the pass tool. So I'm going to show you how to tweak your selection once you have the initial part selected with this tool. So I'm going to go ahead and continue making my selection here. Once you're back at the starting point, to close out the path, you're going to hold down your control key and click on that first point. Now that it's closed, let's go ahead and create the selection by hitting our return or enter key. Now that we have our selection, I would recommend saving it by converting it to a path. So let me show you how to do that. We're going to go up to select and choose to path. Now you can go in the path panel to see where that path has been saved. So we're going to go up to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and select Pass. There it is. So right here it says Selection, which it is currently. And if we turn it on, it's currently turned off. 
we will see a red outline. So I'm going to deselect with Command or Control, Shift plus A. And now my selection has been replaced with this red outline. So you would think that the selection is gone forever, but because we converted it to a path, I can then grab my pass tool with the letter B. And then once you click on this red outline, you need to make sure it's turned on first. It will then convert it to a path. And then in the tool options, you can select selection from path. And now you have your selection again. I'm going to go ahead and grab my move tool. And the reason why I like doing this is because, like I said before, you may need to tweak your selection or maybe you made a mistake like I did. You can see right here, I left out part of the outfit. So instead of starting over from scratch, I can use this selection as my starting point, And then I can grab another tool to make the selection here or use the same one that I used before. So this time I'm going to grab my free select tool and I'm going to draw around this particular part of the outfit. Now the key to this is making sure in your tool options you have this option turned on. Add to the current selection. If not, it's going to select this part and get rid of the original selection. So by default, this is turned off, but I had it turned on previously. You can also use your keyboard shortcut by holding down your shift key as you draw around an area that you want to select. So now this is part of the selection. I may want to come down here and double check and make sure I have everything selected properly. It looks like we have some parts of the clothing here not included. And then we have the background included in that selection as well. So I want to get rid of this and add that. So I can just paint around this. And if it's not going to work, which it looks like, we may need to switch tools and then go back because sometimes there's a bug in GIMP and that will cause an issue where you can't make a selection. So choosing another tool and then reselecting the one you want to use will solve it. So again, it's doing it again. Now, the other thing we want to do is we want to remove from the selection. So we're going to select this option here or hold down your control key to subtract from. So I'm going to grab my move tool with the letter M and then my free select tool with the letter F so I can reset it. Now, one other quick tip, if you want to further refine your selection because it's still not going along the edge, the other selection tool I like to use is my quick mask mode, which you can turn on right here or with shift plus Q. And then you can paint with black and white. We're going to reset our foreground colors here. So grab your paintbrush tool, resize the brush accordingly. And then when you paint with black, it's going to remove from the selection. Now I want to grab a soft edged brush here. And then if you paint with white, it's going to add to the selection. So now I'm painting with white and I switched my foreground color here to white with the letter X. So press that anytime you want to swap the foreground and background colors. Okay, I'm going to hold down my spacebar key so I can navigate to this side of the image because I thought I saw some parts that need to be updated like right here. And it looks like down here as well. Okay, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this and make it perfect. I just want to share some tips with you so you can learn how to make precise selections. So I'm just going to tune this one up just a little bit and then we'll go ahead and begin changing the color of her outfit. All right, I think that's good. So with Command or Control, Shift plus J, you can zoom all the way out. Now to get out of quick mask mode, you're going to press on this little icon again or use Shift plus Q. So there's our new selection and we can begin making our color change. So the first option I'm going to show you is we're going to fill in our selection with our color of choice. But first, let's work non-destructively and place this particular color on a new layer. So I'm going to call this color one. I'm going to fill it with transparency. Then I'm going to come over here to my foreground color swatch here so I can choose a color. So let's pick out any color that you like. I'm going to choose this blue color here. And then with the paint bucket tool, I'm going to go ahead and click to fill it in 
and it will automatically change the color of the outfit. Almost. We have a new color, but it doesn't look like an outfit, does it? So we have a solid color. So what we need to do to fix that is we need to change the blending mode. So we're going to scroll all the way down here and choose HSV hue. And that's going to keep the tonal range of the image and apply the colors accordingly in that tonal range. So there you go. How cool is that? Now, if you're not liking the color tone based on that blending mode, well, you can always try a different blending mode to see if you can come up with something you like. So let's come in here and try HSL color. It's a little bit deeper in color versus the other option. We also have an LCH hue and LCH color blend mode that may give you the results you want. So you need to experiment with these different blending modes. And I'm not going to go into great detail about how these different blending modes work. We have other tutorials for that. So you now know how to apply the color change to your outfit. But I want to share another method for changing colors in case you're not getting the color that you want, because this is not always going to give you what you want. So the next step is to duplicate our image layer here. And I'm going to double click and call it color two. Looks like I missed this one. I'm going to rename this color one. All right, let's go ahead and turn this one off. Make sure your color two layer is selected. And this time we're going to go up to colors and select colorize and boom, you automatically have a new color without having to use a blending mode, even though under the blending options here, we have a mode set by default called replace. So if you want to try a different blending mode, you can do it from here, but I would recommend leaving it on replace. And then if you want to change the blending mode later on, you can apply it from here, but it will then blend in with the layer below, giving you a completely different color. So for this method, I would recommend leaving it on replace and choosing the exact color from here. So from here, you can adjust the color with the hue slider, which is pretty cool. You can increase or decrease the color saturation, and you can also increase or decrease the brightness of the colors. So you want to be conservative when you're using this option here, because if you go too far, it's going to wash out the outfit. If you go too far to the left, you will end up losing detail in the outfit. But if you want a black or darker color, that would be an option for achieving that. You can also click on this color box to get your color picker window, and then you can choose your color from here based on what you need. You can also type in a HTML notation or a hexadecimal number here if you have a specific number. Just keep in mind that specific color will not match exactly because it's blending in with the tonal ranges of the outfit itself and you're not going to get exact results, but it will get you close to it. And then you can make your adjustments from here to fine tune the color you need. Now, the other thing you can do is you can grab a color from within the image to use as the color. So for example, maybe you want a color from her eyes or to have the outfit match the color of her eyes. So we can click right here to get our eyedropper tool and then we can sample a color from her eyes and then it will update accordingly. Her eyes probably aren't that color, so I would recommend zooming in to get a better sample of the color of her eyes. We can also select the eyeshadow here if we wanted to and use that instead. Or maybe we want to use something from the background. How cool is that? I love it. So now you can save this as a layered file in the XCF file format, which is native to GIMP, which will save all your layers. And then if you have a client that you're working for and they request a different color, you will have your pass available to come back and make a new color change based on your previous selection. If you want to find out more about recoloring images in your photos with GIMP, check out that playlist to your left. Thanks for listening and have an awesome day.